Hey everybody, here is John Corelli, your average guy with his average guy opinions. Um, this is episode 39, um, why we need Black History Month. <clears throat> so, a little history on Black History Month. Black History Month uh, began as Black History Week. Uh, back in 1926, a man j named uh, Carter G. Woodson uh, came up with it. Um, it was, uh, I believe he was a teacher at a place called, or, or, or he was part of an organization called um, uh, the Association for uh, Negro um, Life and History or something like that. <laughs> I forgot the name of it already, even though I just did the research. But it started in 26. It wasn't made a month until 1970 by activists such as the Black Panthers and such and, and strong uh, campus groups, um, black fraternities and such, brought that about in 1970. Um, originally, the week was to celebrate the uh, dates of uh, February 12th when President Abraham Lincoln was born and February 20th when uh, Frederick Douglass was born. So that's why Black History Week was traditionally between those two dates. Um, and then, like I said, it became Black History Month in um, 1970. Uh, this is really a weird thing to me. It, it became that um, in 1970 at Kent State University. Uh, that ha it happened in January, February is when it was developed. And, and then a few short months later, on May 4th, is when the Kent State Massacre happened. So that's pretty crazy. Um, so apparently Kent State was a very volatile place to be in 1970. Apparently there was a lot of activism going on. and. Obviously, the National Guard uh, did what they did in response to that activism, which is horrific, and killed four people on that date. Um, a lot of history people like myself know a lot about it. But um, I don't want to digress too much into that. I want to talk about Black History Month and why it's important. Um, here's what happened for me to make it, I mean, it's always been important to me. Didn't really, I don't remember it being a big thing until the 80s, to be honest. I don't even remember it being taught in my school. It probably was, or maybe it wasn't, because history professors, even though they probably had a curriculum that they were supposed to follow, may or may not have followed it. Um, but I honestly don't remember it being much of a deal in, in, uh, in high school in the 80s. Um, so here's what happened this week. A couple days ago, um, um, my coworkers, it was weird. Um, I work, and I've probably mentioned this before, but my school is about 80% kids of color. Um, the staff does not reflect that. Um, the staff is probably about maybe 50 50 or even mostly white. Our principal is a black woman, um, one of our assistant principals is a black woman. Two of the other two assistant principals, I can't say that, are, are white men. So, you know, like I say, it's probably 50-50 staff-wise as to people of color versus white. 80% um, uh, of the students are of color, though. And many of them are Muslim students. Um, many of them are immigrants. Uh, it's in Aurora, so Aurora is really the melting pot of Denver and therefore Colorado. Um, it's a pretty cool place to live. I don't live there anymore, but I did for a good uh, 10 years. And now I'm out here in Wheat Ridge with my parents and my kids, but I still get to work in, you know, I still work at that school. And Logan will return there. Um, my youngest son will return there in, uh, in uh, August, hopefully. Right now he's doing online in time of COVID. Um, Dante also went there, my oldest son. He, he, was, he went there and graduated in 2016. Uh, it was a great place for him to, to further his education. Did really well. Um, this is another little sidelight, and I'm sorry this is also has nothing to do with Black History Month, but um, Dante, um, a lot of uh, programs in, in schools have what they call transition program, and Dante was fortunate enough to be in that, and also very fortunate to, to have a wonderful uh, teacher. Uh, she's basically ran the program back then. Her name was Rose Duran, and she pushed Dante and now he's more independent than they, even myself and his mother thought he would ever be because of those three extra years he got after high school in the transitions program. So anyway, back to black history and why it's important. So I'm, I'm sitting at a table, you know, it, it, it's in the cafeteria, so we're, we're, you know, we're supervising our children. It's pretty easy, you know, the kids are eating lunch, they're not going to do anything ridiculous. And I'm at a table with three white coworkers who are paraprofessionals like me for the special needs and you know you just feel it coming you just like oh man because I know them they're, they're nice perfectly nice people but they're way right of me when it comes to politically I think all three of these people voted for Trump 
Uh, one is significantly younger than me, one's my age, and the other is like 15 years younger than me. Um, so, and which I guess is significant as well. So like a 23-year-old, a 38-year-old, two 55-year-olds, I'll just round up, okay? And um, they kind of start bitching a little bit. And it, it's like they try to make it funny, but the 38-year-old male, he's just like, yeah, where's my poster on the wall, man? I want my poster. I go, what are you talking about? Those Black History Month, where's, where's my poster? They have posters. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I go, we get everything. <laughs> we, we got the whole year, even February. We've got everything. What are you complaining about? And I go, by the way, you actually have a poster on the wall, literally with your face on it, because a year or two ago, they did a, like, they were pushing reading a lot, like, you know, um, casual reading to, you know, help you, help, to help your brain and uh, they did it was a pretty cool campaign I wasn't working there yet I was still at the elementary school that's nearby but uh, they did uh, posters of a lot of the teachers and even some of the students in the school reading books and he was one of those teachers I go you <laughs> he is he's still there he's like right by the cafeteria I go so that was kind of funny even, even he had to laugh at that I was just like dude you got a poster right there with you on it and so he's like okay and then uh, the lady that's my age kind of chimed in and said, well, why do they get groups? Why do we have black alliance groups? And why do we have Muslim alliance groups? And we don't have white alliance groups. I go, well, you know, white alliance groups don't look too great, do they? White alliance groups are like the Proud Boys and the KKK because they're not necessary. They're not necessary. We don't need them. We don't need unification of white people. We f we're doing fine. And also, I say, hey, how about you travel down the road to one of the, the super white schools as you go southeast into Aurora, it's a lot more white people than in the northwest quadrant of Aurora. Why don't you go there? See how many Muslim and black group alliances they have, okay? And by the way, I also mentioned this. They do have Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They had that back when I was in the 80s, and I actually got lectured one time by a gym teacher And when I was in middle school. She asked what I was, and I, I wasn't sure yet. I was basically an agnostic, She's, and I was just like, I don't know how I believe. I don't know if I believe in God. And she's the big Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, a gym teacher for the girls, and she's, and she's just like, well, that's just wrong. And I'm like, what kind of fucking teacher tells a kid who's in eighth grade that he's wrong for his belief system? I don't care how Christian you are. Um, you know, but I didn't have the balls to tell her to go fuck herself because back in 1980, that didn't work very well. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that kind of bullshit happens all the time. And those, and that, there you go. That's the reason we need those groups, right? That's the reason we need Black History Month. But, to, you know, like, do you think if I would have said I was Muslim, she would have said, oh, that's okay. No, she would have said the same thing. She said, no, you got to be a Christian. Oh, no. No. Bullshit. No. And it happens all the time. It's still happening. And that's why we have the needs for those groups. We have need, the need for Black History Month because of the discussion that just happened. Literally on Tuesday or Wednesday. People are saying, well, I don't understand why we need it. We, under, we need it. Because we didn't have it. <laughs> we didn't have it up until 1926. In 26, we only had it for a week, and it was a very slow start. And it ironically started in, uh, I believe, uh, West Virginia and North Carolina. It was in southern states where it started because this guy, Carter G. Woodson, saw it was needed. Do you think we were teaching a lot of black history before 1926, really? Only 60 years after the Civil War? No, we weren't. Like I said, even in the 1980s, I wasn't seeing a lot of it. You had to seek it out on your own. So... That's the reason we need it, okay? Just and just open your mind a little bit. Um, I actually had a girlfriend, very short-lived girlfriend back in 2016. Same thing, we were dating in February. And she's like, I don't know why they need a month. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So that helped uh, finish off that relationship rather quickly. We were done by April. Um, probably should have been done by February. But <laughs> this is just, ugh, I don't understand. I get upset. We have clubs for every ethnicity of white person, if you want to call it an ethnicity. I guess that's not the right word. Every nationality. We have Knights of Columbus. We have the Turnverein for German people. We probably have every European country at some place in, the, in this great nation of ours represented through a club for white people. So when I say white people, get over it. I mean it. Please get over it. Open your eyes and see that uh, black history and... Latino history, Asian history, Native American history, they all have a lot to offer and they're very interesting. Our, our histories are interesting too. I'm not taking that away from us. And that's what you got to understand. One month out of the year doesn't take anything away from you. It just adds actually. If you kind of get into it, maybe learn about Malcolm X or George Washington Carver or Brooklyn T. Washington or, you know, some of the great authors like James uh, Baldwin or Richard Wright 
or many others that we've never even heard of. It enriches your life. I'm at 10 minutes. Thanks, guys. A little rambly today. That's okay. We'll get better. Um, and like I said, thank you for listening. Thanks for subscribing. If there's anything you want me to cover, please put it in the comments. I'll try to cover it. And uh, have a great day. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.